An object of mass m is allowed to slide down a frictionless ramp of angle theta, and its speed at the bottom is recorded as v. If this same process was followed on a planet with twice the gravitational acceleration of Earth, what would be its final speed? Okay, so essentially there are two ways to approach this. One, we can do it the kinematic way using kinematic formulas. Or two, we can do it according to potential and kinetic energy. So I'll split this video into two and I'll put timestamps in the description. So the first part, we'll do it kinematically. So we need to find the final velocity, which was asked at the last part here. So uh, using the equation v final squared minus v initial squared equals 2a delta x, these conditions would be satisfied. There's other equations like using delta x equals 1 half a t squared plus v initial t, but that doesn't really help you find final velocity. That's more related to time. So this formula works best. Uh, we know here that the initial velocity is actually just zero because as it said, it's allowed to slide down and its initial velocity would thereby be zero. So that leaves us with v final squared equals 2a delta x. Uh, now we have one more thing to solve for, and it's a. Well, a was also one of the conditions that's being changed in the situation. We know that typically a equals g sine theta when a box goes down a slope with no other conditions, like no friction. And here it says that the gravity's doubled, so we'll call this a sub b, for instance, that will equal 2g sine theta. So in this case, it will go faster. The final velocity will be faster because there's double gravity. So that's pretty logical thinking. So again, let's substitute that in. So v final squared equals 2 times 2g sine theta times delta x. And now all we have to do is take the square root to find v final. And that equals rad 4 because, you know, these twos multiply g sine theta delta x. Now what they were asking for is relative to v, like the initial one without double gravity, what would be the final speed. So this is the modified speed. Now let's go back to treat it as if there were nothing special going on. So we would instead just use a instead of a sub b, and we would have v final squared. Instead of having it be 4 g sine theta delta x, we just have it be 2 g sine theta delta x because this time we're not multiplying it by 2 we're just straight up plugging in g sine theta for a so 2 g sine theta delta x we take the rad of that and we get v final i'll call this like initial you know for the sake of not confusing the two equals rad 2 g sine theta delta x now we're going to divide the modified version by the initial version and essentially these terms are the same. We're only looking at the rad two and the rad four. And now that we have both proportions of v final and the modified v final, we can put that as a fraction. So v final over v final, uh, we can just call it initial because like without the double gravity. And this will equal, we put it over here rad four over, and we put this down here rad two and simply, this just equals rad 2, because rad 2 times rad 2 is rad 4. And uh, now we're trying to find the final speed, so let's cross multiply, so it would be over 1 here. And that gives us v final equals rad 2 v final initial. In, in this case, I think the answer they want you to say is just v final equals rad 2 v, and there you go. Analyzing this, we can see that v final would be rad 2 times v final initial. So we know that it will be actually faster because with more gravity, boxes can go down way quicker. Now let's do it using conservation of energy. So we know using the basic formulas, uh, kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Now, since they said it was frictionless, there will be no other energy or work, so this is it. So let's see if we can cancel anything here. Well, when the box is initially uh, sitting there, does it have any movement? No, obviously not, so there's no kinetic energy. And at the end, will the box have any potential energy? 
And again, that's no because it's at the bottom here. It's no longer at a relative height. So that leaves us with u initial equals k final. So let's solve that. MGH is the formula for potential energy equals one half mv squared, which is the formula for kinetic energy. And we can see here the m's cancel. So m isn't even uh, relevant when you use these formulas. So we get one half v final squared equals gh. That's it. Multiply that by two, we get v squared equals two gh. Take the rad and we get v equals rad two gh. See, that's what the final velocity would be if we were in the normal conditions. And if we modify it to have twice the gravitational acceleration, it will give us a different answer. So let's put this on the side for now. So what can we change here? Well, if it's twice gravitational acceleration, all we got to do is put a 2 coefficient in front of gh. So let's modify that and say 2gh now equals 1 half v squared. Again, we'll do the same process, multiply by 2 you get v squared equals this time 4gh. Take the rad of that, and now we got v equals rad 4gh. Oh, that's a little more than rad 2gh, right? So that's good, that makes sense. And now we'll call this v final, and we'll just call this v. So uh, all, now all we have to do is find v final relative to v. That's what the question's asking, see it as recorded as v. So all we got to do is make a fraction, v final over v equals rad 4gh, because, you know, that's what this equals, over rad 2gh. We can see the gh is cancel, and that leaves us with rad 4 over rad 2, which is, again, rad 2. And now if we put that over 1 and cross multiply, we can get that v final equals, again, rad 2v, which is our answer. So both ways essentially work. You can just pick which one you're more comfortable with on the exam. Or honestly, I feel like this way might be a little quicker because kinematics is a little cumbersome where you have to calculate for acceleration. Here you don't have to. And um, yeah, essentially that's it. You can just pick which way you want. And uh, if you have any questions, please put in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.